Hello and welcome. This video is going to discuss the new check-in and check-out portal that's available in version 13. Before we begin, I'm going to show a quick clip and I'm going to give some light commentary on what's happening. This is just going to be a good way to show off exactly what this feature can do. So with that, my colleague is walking into kind of quote unquote our gauge room and he needs to take two gauges with him. So he needs to record a checkout event, let gauge pack know. So with that, we can see Derek walk up. He selects what he wants to do. He wants to perform a checkout. He's scanning his own employee badge, which gauge pack knows about. Picking up and scanning the two different gauges he needs to take for a job. Then he's simply filling out a couple of the prompts for status and where this new location is going to be. With that, he's now performed his check-in and check-out actions that were necessary, and he's taken the gauges and moved on. So that is kind of a highlight of how simple this new feature can be. It is a kind of a terminal service in a way where you walk up, the computer is already set and ready to go, and then you just tell GagePack what you want to do. So with that, that quick action, and it probably could be even quicker if he wasn't being filmed, but the idea behind this is you have a lot of gauges that you have to maintain, that you have to track, that you need to know exactly where they are at a moment's time. Now, GagePack has been able to leverage check-ins and check-outs for many years. You can simply click on a gauge and tell GagePack, I need to check this gauge out. I'm gonna be taking it from where it lives right now, maybe in the gauge or tool room, and I might need to change its status. Maybe it's gonna be now in use and I'm gonna take it and we're gonna we're going to move it out to the spoiler line and give a whole bunch of other details if necessary. So that has the advantage of updating the gauge information. It's going to be a traceable history, something that you, a manager, an auditor might need to look back on and figure out, well, what has happened in the life of this gauge? So this new check-in and check-out portal simplifies all that. Right now, we've got a lot of information on the screen. The whole gauge pack window is open. I've got 14 different events that I can launch, and I've got lots of different items on display. Well, for a lot of your colleagues, they don't really need to see all that. It, it seems like noise. It's extra decisions that they might have to make, and the more decisions, sometimes the less likely they're going to use it at all. So the new check-in, check-out portal, uh, the whole mindset of that is, there's only three possible avenues, check in, check out, or open gauge pack proper. So that simplifies the questions that a potential colleague of yours has to answer. They just need to grab the gauges, fill in some details, and they wanna be on their way. So with that in mind, how can we set up and enable this sort of a system? Well, one, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about printing out barcodes, excuse me, barcodes, uh, we've already done some other videos on that. You can check those out in our user community. And really, it's just right-clicking on a particular gauge and saying, I want to print out a barcode label. So again, we've already done a couple of videos on this. This is pretty uh, easy once you get going. But you can print off as many barcodes as you need. This one is for this particular gauge, C01001. So we'll put a pin in that. That one is going to be covered again in some other videos. But let's talk a little bit about what's different in version 13 to make this check-in, check-out portal work. One of the first things is we're going to come up to File, down to Settings, and we're going to go to Global Collections. The place that we're going to look at is Users. You noticed in the video, Derek was able to scan his own employee badge. So GagePack had to have some idea or concept of that. And if you notice, when we open up a user in GagePack, there's a new field specifically for badge number. So you can fill this in, or what I like to do is just open up that particular user, and then I'll scan their badge live. For instance, I have yet to make one for myself. Well, there's the field for badge number, and I have my badge handy. So let me go ahead and scan my badge, and that's the number or sequence that's encoded. So now anytime I were to scan this in the future using this check-in, check-out portal, GagePack is going to go, oh, well, I recognize that number. That's Eric Gasper. So that's how you can make a logical connection to your existing 
uh, badges or barcodes that you're already deploying and using at your facility. One other note about that, if you are at a facility, plant, company that doesn't yet use any sort of barcoding or badges to speak of, maybe it's a smaller shop, you can still leverage this feature for GagePack. At the very bottom, there's a little checkbox on the user section, and it just says automatically generate badge numbers for users. So if you don't have them, no problem, check that box, and GagePack can make badge numbers for all of the users, and you can print those badges out. So that's one key focus. The second key focus for getting this going is you noticed that when Derek was doing his check in and check out, that form seemed far simpler than our traditional check in and check out form. There was a lot less fields to work with. Well, part of that is based on what we call validation criteria. So under validation criteria, we have two new drop downs or sections for the check in portal and the checkout portal. Let's give one of these a click. So the checkout, and I'm gonna hit setup. This is showing me all of the potential fields that can be displayed when we want to do a checkout via the portal. So we had hidden a lot of them. Maybe in our organization, we determined, look, there's only two main things we want, the user, we wanna know about the status and location, and a lot of these other ones, they're not as important. But if you do want to show other things, maybe you do want to show the cost, you can make it optional, required, or just make it hidden. Let's say we want to make the cost and time both optional. It just means that when the checkout form appears for the portal, it'll include those two fields which the user can take advantage of. If you choose something like required, oops, <laughs> required, that just means they're not gonna be able to save this checkout event unless they fill in those details. So you, as a company, you get to determine for the check-ins and for the checkouts what information is gonna be most important and critical. If I have to give a suggestion, I would stipulate, it'd be probably a good idea to put as few fields on these as possible, only because if you make the experience fast and quick, then your end users are more than likely going to use it. If it's too complex, if there's too many fields, if too many things are required, they might just start taking the gauges and go. The last piece of this puzzle is if we come up to the local settings at the top and click on general, how do we tell GagePack that we want to use this feature? Well, under the local settings in general, there's a new checkbox for open the check-in and check-out portal when you first launch GagePack. So you can give that a click. When you hit save and exit now, that just means the next time somebody launches GagePack on this computer, let's go ahead and do that now, it's gonna launch it for that portal first. And the portal again gives us those three options. We wanna do a check in, we wanna do a check out, or we just wanna open up GagePack. So if I wanted to do something like a check-in event, maybe on those two gauges that Derek did a little bit ago, it's first gonna ask for who is gonna be doing this. Let's say it's me this time. Okay, so now it knows Eric Gasper is the one who's about to perform this because I just scanned my badge. And on which gauges? Let's say this one, and we'll pick this one too. So, I didn't alter or change the check-in, I only changed the check-out form when we were in the settings a moment ago. Now that I'm checking these in, I'll make the status back to available. And let's say that they're going back to the gauge room. Any additional notes? No thanks. I hit check-in and that action is done. So you can easily take gauges, record that information, and you can also return gauges without too much trouble. Let's go ahead and go back into GagePack. And we'll take a look at the history just so we can highlight. Those gauges were earlier today checked out by Derek. And just a moment ago, a couple of seconds ago really, they were just checked in by Eric. So GagePack will continue to record all of these events. It'll tie them to the appropriate person. And uh, it's very easy to use. So these check-ins and check-outs, 
The portal itself, it is on a per computer basis. That's why when we went into the settings, we saw that it was under the local settings in general. So you can essentially pick which computer can kind of act as your check-in and check-out station, your portal. So I hope this information is helpful. Have a wonderful day.